I once suggested that Panasonic was using a random password generator to name its cameras. That was after they produced the GX8, which, good camera that it was, had very little in common with the GX7. While the GX80, that obviously was the gx 7s successor, had stepped into the numbering system of the G-Series, which itself came in the guise of GX80, 81 and 85. These, naturally, were all the same camera. Panasonic's random generator must have broken, because here is the GX9, which is obviously a development of the GX7, and puts their model naming into some sort of logical condition. So, GX is for rainfire style bodies, G for DSLR style cameras, and GH for hybrids with advanced video capabilities. In reality, all are hybrids, and will do stills and video well enough for most of us. With a bit of luck, future cameras will now use this naming logic, and also do away with the 81, 80 and 85 nonsense, which I know has confused many photographers. At first glance, the GX9 could be mistaken for the GX80. It's actually a tiny bit bigger, but we're talking 2mm on width and 3mm on depth, so you need the two cameras side by side to see it. It's a teeny bit heavier too, at 450 grams as against 426, fueled up and ready to go. The most important IQ difference is the 20 megapixel sensor, which is becoming the standard for Panasonic's range now. There's a tilting monitor, which many prefer for quickness in street operation, and the return of the tilting EVF, which the GX8 had, but was dropped for the GX80. A physical exposure compensation dial is placed around the mode dial, a la GX8, and there's a most welcome focus mode lever, which saves having to dive into the memory for this everyday function. Speaking of the menu, there is a My Menu section in there, where you can gather all your mainly used functions from all the menus in one place. It doesn't sound a lot, but it transforms the ease of use, especially because you can order each item as you wish. On the downside, the one thing I'd really like to have changed hasn't been changed, and that's the EVF. It is smaller than it needs to be for 4.3 stills, because its native format is for video, which masks down to 4.3. I just wish they had made it 4.3 and as big as they could. It would make 16.9 smaller, but you'd mostly be using the monitor for video anyway, and 3.2 makes no sense when you have 4.3 available. There's a neat new door for the USB and HDMI connections. You can once again charge the battery in situ. Finally, there's a handy built-in flash, and the power switch and the video button are moved. Even so, for any photographer who has or has used the GX80, the GX9 will feel totally familiar. The GX7, GX80 and now GX9 are widely regarded as Panasonic street camera. I go along with that. The rangefinder design, compact body and fast single shot focusing are ideal for it. Fit a medium wide angle, stick it on f2.8 and you have street bliss. With 35mm equipment I would use hyperfocal point focus, setting the lens to 5.6 and 2.5 meters distance and shooting away for anything between 1.5 meters and infinity. That wouldn't wash in these days of pixel peeping of course. With the GX9 you can pretty much rely on the 49 zone focusing to find the right spot and focus accurately and instantly. Its algorithm is highly intuitive and rarely mistakes the background for the subject. The swiveling EVF I use occasionally, mainly because it is there, but I never missed it on the GX80. All the controls fall neatly to hand, and for me the GX9 is about as small as I want a camera to be, any smaller and the ergonomics suffer. Like the GX80, it's big enough to be your only camera and small enough to be a second one. This and a G9 pair are about as good as it gets in Micro Four Thirds. I could say the same about an Olympus EM1 Mark II paired with an EM10 Mark II, but I do like a rangefinder style for a second camera. A Pen F is a bit big and expensive for a backup body, really. Speaking as someone who doesn't use flash a lot, GX9's pop-up item fills the bill nicely for when I do, and it's nice to see it retained when so many bodies have dropped it. Although it doesn't have a bounce position, you can hold it there, and it will also act as a master to trigger wireless flashes. It retains the effective panorama mode with automatic stitching in camera and has a new sequence composition setting using the 4K still shooting. Not unexpectedly, there is no 6K stills mode. The shutter is whisper quiet and the stabilizer is effective with my old 300mm nickel. Not uncanny like an EM1 Mark II or G9, but easily good for 3 to 4 stops. With dual stabilisation using Panasonic lenses, 
it's a half to a stop better as far as I can estimate. All of this is usable with video too. In terms of overall spec, the GX9 is very comprehensive and the solid feel leaves you with an impression of a camera made to a purpose rather than a price. Its performance is as you'd expect. With single autofocus, if you hose it around, the focus speed is limited not by acquiring focus, but by the time it takes you to steady the camera enough to press the shutter. AFC continuous focus is pretty good, not as good as for the top line Micro Four Thirds models, but more than adequate for general purposes, like my on-set shots for a short film here. Follow focus is more contingent on computing power than anything else, which is why it can often be better on more expensive models. Few of us use our cameras to the extremes of their capabilities, so for someone like me, the CAF and 6 frames per second with live view of the GX9 is plenty. The 20 megapixel sensor without low pass filter gives crisp and detailed pictures as good as any Micro Four Thirds camera available. But the JPEGs are concerned, the rendering is extremely nice overall and probably will please a lot of Olympus fans too. As I see it, the GX9 is a general refresh of the GX80. There are good things like the latest sensor, lack of low pass filter and the power save EVF shooting which can extend battery life by a factor of three or more without necessarily driving you mad and a separate compensation dial. But there are a few lost opportunities. For example, pressing the rear dial simply duplicates the action of the menu set button. What a shame that it couldn't be set to switch between the e-shutter and the mechanical shutter or something equally useful. The most useful improvement would have been a rejig of the EVF to give a native stills 4.3 format and to minimise the sheer effect that its design can cause. It doesn't bother me but it does many photographers which means it's better to try this EVF before buying the camera. I think there are several views possible on the GX9. If you have a GX7 almost everything is upgraded including a quiet and sweet shutter sound all with a barely noticeable increase in size and it's worth the upgrade. If you have a GX80, there is nothing radically different here and I'd be inclined to stay with it and see what a GX10 might bring. If you have a GX8, it's such a different size camera from the GX9 that they're in different categories really. I'd only change if I was willing to forego the GX8's far, far superior EVF, which I wouldn't be. If I didn't have a Micro Four Thirds camera, the GX9 would be very attractive. It yields the same high image quality as the most expensive Micro Four Thirds cameras but it isn't as bulky, heavy or intimidating to set up and use. If you are new to Micro Four Thirds and want to try your hand at street photography, this is probably the most effective way to do it other than the cheaper GX80. I don't mean to damn with faint praise, but as a follow-up to the GX80, I'd say the GX9 is worthwhile but not essential. It feels a bit like an interim upgrade, but I do like it, but then I like the GX80 too. Thanks for watching.